Welcome, welcome. Let's see. Making sure that everything is working. If you are watching and you can see and hear me, let me know in the comments so that I know everything's going smoothly. And once I know it's working, we will get started. I'm super excited about this week's uh, this week's recipe. Now, if you guys can hear the squeaking, it's my fridge. My fridge has been dying for like nine years. Every time we get a repair guy out here, because something will go wrong, we'll get a repair guy out here. He'll get it to this point where it works. Uh, and I mean, none of the bells and whistles works, but the fridge works. And he'll say, oh, this is probably going to die in the next six months. It's been nine years. Uh, and it's still working. But I'm thinking that this is what I, that Santa's going to bring me, his new fridge, because... <laughs> It's getting ridiculously loud. Okay, uh, let's, uh, all right, I, yay, Paige, welcome, welcome. Oh, you like my hair, thank you so much. It's finally long enough that I don't hate it anymore. I still miss my super short hair. Uh, Diane, welcome, welcome. All right, I'm trying something different for Facebook comments this week, so we shall see if it works. Um, because I've been struggling to keep up with the Facebook comments because they've changed how they show them on the phone app. And um, so we'll see if this works. Oops, let me do that. Ba -ba -ba. Sorry, excuse me. Let's see. Let's see if we can see the comments. You gotta love old laptops that... don't want to, this might not work, we'll see. Okay, Margaret, hello, Rhonda, Dora, welcome, welcome. Okay, let's see if it actually updates on those Facebook comments. Um, otherwise, we'll have to do something else. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Today we are, I've said that like five times, <laughs> making my homemade liege waffles. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little history of this recipe really fast. Uh, actually, first, we're going to heat the milk. So... Belgian waffles are a yeast-based uh, waffle. Uh, and they're a thicker dough than like the batter that you pour into a waffle iron, right? These are, you'll, if you go to a liege waffle restaurant, you'll see these little balls of dough that they have with the little bits of sugar all over it. It's a yeast-based dough. It is thicker. It's delicious. It needs some rise time. It has a great yeasty flavor. Um, they're amazing. Anyway, so uh, as with any recipe that you're using yeast for, when you add your yeast and your liquid to the bowl, you want to make sure that your liquid is about 112 degrees. Anywhere between 110 and 115 is going to be warm enough that it will activate your yeast and not too hot to kill your yeast. So back to the history of this recipe. My dad is, um, is pretty cute. And... He, uh, he's not a major foodie. In fact, there's very few things he has an opinion about. Okay. A little bit of warm, of course, because my milk is out. Usually 45 seconds is perfect from fridge, direct, milk directly from the fridge. Mine's been out a little bit. So I should have cooked it longer. That's my bad. I swear this happens every time. I have it perfect. 45 seconds straight milk straight from the fridge is usually perfect for the temperature. And then of course, when I do it live, it's not quite perfect. Okay. <laughs> Let's get this going. Okay. So. In our bowl, we have our yeast, we have a teaspoon of sugar because it helps activate the yeast, and then we have our warm milk. Give that a little mix just so that there's no clumps of the yeast floating on top, and then we're going to let that rest. Typically, I would let it rest for about 10 minutes because we're doing live. I'm just going to let it rest while I talk. 
Okay, history of this recipe. Uh, my dad, not a foodie. There's a couple things he has very strong opinions about. He does not like dark plates. Like, he won't eat off of dark plates. And uh, he doesn't like Indian food, which is crazy because I adore Indian food. Oh, also, no sushi. Again, I love sushi. But, so he's just a pretty plain eater. My mom loves food. She's willing to try anything. And my dad will, of course, eat anything. Like, he's not picky. He will eat anything. He just has those preferences. Um, he's, you know, pretty basic. Spaghetti, pancakes, a lot of breakfast for dinner. Uh, anyway, every once in a while, he will come up with something that he, he will find something that he loves. And he'll ask me to recreate it. And one of these is Liege waffles. So about nine years ago, he came to me. He's like, Ashley, there's this new thing out and about called Liege waffles. They're from Europe. They are amazing. And I want you to learn how to make them. So I tried, I looked online. I tried probably 10 or 12 different recipes. There's two Liege waffle places close to me. So I went and ate at both of those. To, you know, so I knew what it tasted like, I tried recipes, um, and I found one that I really, really loved. And I have made it for, I tweaked it, <laughs> and I've made it for about eight years. Anyway, over the last eight, nine years, I have tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it. And this is the easiest. It started out on, the, on a more difficult side. It started out with a first rise, a second rise, a third rise, and a fourth rise. Um, and that helps give by letting it have those rises and knocking it down and rises and knocking it down. It creates a more yeasty flavor, which these are known for. If you go to Bruges in Belgium, they will have a more yeasty flavor to them. Um, any recipe that is like make in the same day that you like make the dough and cook them in the same day is not going to have that established flavor. That doesn't mean they're not going to look right. They'll look right. They'll be doughy. They'll be... They'll have the sugar that crystallizes as it cooks, but they won't have that super authentic yeasty flavor. Now, if you don't like yeasty flavor, then go ahead and do a quicker version. Uh, but anyway, I have now got it down to two rises, but um, one of them is overnight in the fridge. Now, as I talked about last week for anybody who had joined me then, by putting yeast dough in, if you put yeast dough in the freezer, it like stops the yeast and it holds it firm so that you can keep the dough for another day. If you put a yeast dough in the refrigerator, it's what we call retards the dough and it slows, it slows it down so that the yeast has time to develop a stronger flavor, but the rise is much, much, much slower. So I recommend a minimum of eight hours up to 24 hours in the fridge for the second rise. Now this works out really good because you can do all the effort into the dough the day before. And then in the morning, because this is a breakfast, I mean, it's a pretty sweet breakfast, but it's Christmas breakfast for us. Most of the year it's dessert. <laughs> but it's nice if you make it for company uh, to be able to do most of the work ahead of time uh, and then just leave it in the fridge until an hour before you're ready to cook it. Anyway, we're going to go through the whole process today. I, of course, already have yeast that's been sitting, or yeast dough that's been sitting in the fridge so that I can show you each steps of this process. So uh, this is, as you can see, we are starting to get some foamy yeast mixture. If I let this go for the full 10 minutes, there would be a lot more foam. But as long as I know it's working and it's active, we are going to go ahead and move on. Uh, Robin, hello. Megan, oh, you have a place near you. That is nice. Um, what is a liege waffle? Terry, that's a great question. It is a, um, it's a thicker dough-based waffle. It's made, it's at the very end, before you cook it, you mix in a bunch of these Belgian sugar pearls is what they're called. This is just a big chunk of sugar. And then when you cook them in your waffle iron, the sugar melts and gives a sugary crust to the outside of the waffle. Okay, so moving on with the recipe. We're going to add some eggs. So because we're using a dough hook and not whisks, I will usually pre-mix my eggs. And that helps, there go. that will help the dough become more cohesive. Uh, Paige, can you use glass bowls for egg whites? Yes, yes you can. Um, metal is always going to be the best. 
especially copper. Copper is the very best for egg whites. Um, but yes, glass is glass and metal are both about the same, and then plastic is the worst. All right, and then our vanilla. The vanilla prices are finally going down. Woohoo! And then finally some honey. <laughs> I'm near the end of a Costco size jar of honey, so it has kind of gotten thick from all the times that I've had to reheat it <laughs> to okay, thicker than normal, I should say. All right, and now we're going to add most of the flour the recipe calls for. Uh, I use about three and a half cups, give or take, and I'm starting with, uh, this is like two and a quarter cups, two and a quarter, two and a half. I just pulled some out in a separate bowl. We're going to use this later. Then some brown sugar and finally some salt. And we're going to give this a mix. with it on low and then as the flour got incorporated I turned it higher and higher and higher so that I didn't just get a uh, flour cloud. Now I am using bread flour because of the higher protein levels um, but you can use all purpose if that's what you have but if you have bread flour I would recommend using that first and foremost. Okay so this is this is a pretty thick dough already as you can see it's already cleaned the sides of my bowl. So for if I was just making, oh, we got a little brown sugar clump. If I was making like a bread dough, this is what I tell you guys to look for, right? Is cleaning the sides of the bowl. And then you want to knead it long enough. It's a little bit sticky still. You want to knead it long enough that you get a good stretch. See that's still breaking. So I would knead it for another, you know, five to 10 minutes if I was making a normal dough. But we are making liege waffles. And one of the best parts of waffles is the butter. So I am, my butter's been sitting out, but it's so cold because it's winter. It's still a little bit warm and I'm going to wash my hands real fast. because you want this to incorporate into the dough easily and quickly. Uh, Kathleen joining from Northern California. Welcome, welcome. Paige, you have another question. How long does vanilla extract last? Um, because it's alcohol-based, it lasts a long time. If you're making homemade vanilla, I mean, let's face it, I don't have vanilla around for that long, but I have a big, huge Costco size vanilla extract that I've been using when I don't, uh, when I can't get real vanilla. And I've probably had it for about a year and it's still fine. Homemade fresh vanilla is a little bit different than the extract. Extract's gonna last you forever. Uh, homemade fresh vanilla, because it has the real beans in it, um, it does get stronger and stronger and stronger flavor, especially if you like keep a bean in there. Um, like, let's see, in this one, 
you can see I have like a bunch of, can you see all the beans that are in there? So this gets stronger and stronger and stronger. If it starts to get too vanilla-y for you, you can just add some more of whatever alcohol your vanilla is. If it's uh, regular vanilla, it's vodka based. You can add just a little bit of vodka to kind of water it down so it's not quite so strong. If it's a rum based, add rum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay. Greetings from New York. Good recipe for a snowstorm. It sure is, Rami. Uh, Kathleen, it's their first time doing one of my lives. Yay! Welcome, welcome. Where do you find the pearls? Great question. Um, I, okay, we're going to move on really fast while I answer that. So you can do two tablespoons of butter at a time, but I found that just doing four tablespoons at a time is just as good if you have a really good machine. If you don't, then consider doing two tablespoons at a time. <laughs> restaurant supply stores will have them there's a store near me that has them but they are more expensive usually they'll come like there's a brand called Lars that comes it's about this big it's about eight ounces so it's just a little bit less than a cup it's like three-fourths cup so you'd need two of those packages and they can get expensive I buy them in bulk in the back of my drawer. I just bought a new five pound box and this is, um, I think this is my five pound. Yes, this is a five pound box. I bought it at Costco. Just look up Belgian pearl sugar. You have to be careful because there's Swedish pearl sugar, which is much smaller and Belgian pearl sugar. You want the Belgian pearl sugar. Um, I'll put a link in the comments when I'm done with the video. Uh, if you click over to my blog post, there should be a link in the blog post, uh, but I, by buying them in bulk, five pounds, because it doesn't go bad. Um, I just keep them in, once I open a bag, I just keep it in a plastic bag, um, because it's like three, it's like a third of the price of the little small containers, and I make this a couple times a year, so personal preference. Um, where are you? I am in Utah. Hello, Grace. Welcome. Uh, can you give exact measurements? Shauna, you're watching on Facebook. If you just click in the link in the description box, it will take you to a uh, printable recipe. Easy peasy. Just click, jump to recipe, print, and you're done. All right, so we have another uh, half cup of butter, or yeah. butter being added you just want to make sure that it's completely incorporated before you add the rest because we're going to add some more flour and that's going to clean the sides for us. So here's the rest of the flour that I have. And I'm going to add about half of it and just see how it goes. Keep it on 
down low until the flower is more incorporated, and then you can move it higher. Alright, so it's thicker, but it's not, um, not all the way there yet. Let's add a little bit more. the bowls like the bowl down here is already totally clean so now we just want to knead it long enough that it has a better stretch and strength to it right now it's ripping really quickly so I would typically need this for about 10 more minutes um, we're not gonna do that for the live I have some other ones but anyway we'll need it for a little bit more see if we can get a little bit a little bit more stretch to it um, hello from uh, Sass Okay, this is going to be a fun one. Saskatch Saskatchewan? Saskatchewan? Is that how you say that? Saskatchewan? Did I get it right? Rachel? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the font is like this big. Um, Dan, welcome. Hot tips. Good evening from the UK. Welcome, welcome. You probably have this everywhere you go. <laughs> So you can see I'm already getting a better stretch just with that little bit of extra kneading. So you can see how a couple more minutes would really uh, do this just. <laughs> with dough like this the, and letting it clean the sides is it's much easier to clean <laughs> your, uh, your mixer afterwards. Now obviously if you do not have a super strong powerful mixer you can do your kneading by hand. So I've had questions in the past of why don't um, why don't I just add the butter when I'm adding everything else and the reason for that is that you don't want melted butter you want softened butter and if you try to mix the softened butter in with the yeast and um, with the yeast and eggs and honey and uh, vanilla and salt and brown sugar um, it's it's gonna just have little clumps um, so it's better to add 
at least half of the flour so that you get that dough consistency already started. Then add your butter and then finish up with the flour. So it doesn't have to be two and a half cups. You can just add half, like just measure out your flour, add half of it. Um, but you want it to be a dough-like consistency when you add that softened butter. Um, but you also don't, if you add all the flour at once, then you might add too much flour, so it's hard to know. So it, I, flour is usually the last thing that I add to doughs so that you can judge how much flour to use, a little bit more, a little less, depending on your altitude and the weather. <laughs> um, so add half the flour, get that butter incorporated, and then continue to add flour until you're happy with the consistency. All right. So you don't have to do a little hand kneading. I just like to kind of bring the dough together. All right, so we have a nice ball of dough. I have greased a bowl with some oil. And this is the first rise. So for the first rise, you want to let it rise until it doubles in size. Check that out. This is about two hours. So uh, it might take a little more or a little less depending on how warm your kitchen is. So I'm just going to cover this, put it off at the side. And we're going to knock, knock down the dough. using a little bit of ball of dough to get out the last little bit. Don't want any to go to waste. Then we're going to give it a quick knead from knocking it down. So that was the first rise. By twisting it like that, you kind of seal the bottom of your dough. There, so you should have a nice ball. Uh, now it is time for the second rise. That's all you do for the in between the first and second rise. So, If you only wrap it like twice as the dough slowly expands in their fridge, it might pop through and then you'll get like a little, little mole type thing, like a little growth outside that starts to dry out. We don't want our, we don't want the dough to get across on it. So I really go to town and wrap this kind of loosely because it is going to expand a little bit. Um, anyway, put this in the fridge. So can you see, oh, no, you can't, hold on. All right, so this is the one that I just finished, All right? Super squishy, and you can see how this one is a lot tighter in the packaging than this one is, and it's a little bit bigger. This is the one that was in the fridge, so. You want to take it out of the fridge about an hour before you're going to do this next part. Um, I forgot. <laughs> so this is going to be fun because I'm going to have to move on. Anyway, you want it to be able to come to, uh, you can, there's two, two different ways to do this. You can, and I've done both. You can pull it out and knead in the sugar while it's a cold, firm dough. That's how I used to do it. And then I would put it into 13 little balls and let those balls come to room temperature and get a little bit poofy um, and then cook them. Or the other way is to let this come to room temperature for about an hour and then it'll be easier to knead in the sugar and then you divide it into dough balls and you cook it right away. Uh, there's a slight difference. I think kneading the sugar crystals in while it's cold and then letting it get poofy for about an hour is slightly better results, but not enough that it's worth the hassle of kneading the sugar into the cold dough. So I would recommend pulling it out of the fridge for an hour before you're ready to start, knead in the dough, divide it into dough balls, and cook it. So 
I'm going to get that warm. All right, so I get to knead it in cold. That's going to be fun. Luckily, these lights are so warm that it's not going to take long to get warm. All right. So I know it looks like a lot, but that is how you get the results we're looking for. And if you notice, there was not a ton of sugar in the dough itself, just a little bit. All right. The fun part about this is as you start kneading in the sugar, uh, the sugar is kind of spiky and it will start to kind of poke through. So that's always fun. You can kind of hear it grind away. <laughs> this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. And it's not even that it's tricky. It's just that it's a little frustrating because the sugar wants to pop away, right? As you knead it through and the, the sugar will kind of pop out, it wants to kind of make a mess and go everywhere. So. Now, depending on the size of your waffle iron will depend on what size you want your balls. So the, the waffle iron I'm using, right, is those are about four inches each. I'm going to do a ball for each of these cavities. So my balls are a little bit smaller. Um, so it really just depends uh, on your, your size. Plus, these are super, super sweet. You don't need a big one, right? You don't need to make these massive waffles for all of your guests. Especially since we're also gonna be adding toppings, right? So uh, my favorite topping is, um, I like lemon curd, fresh whipped cream, and raspberries. My uh, youngest, he likes um, Nutella. My, one of my daughters likes cinnamon and sugar, kind of like a churro. Uh, my one son likes the basic fresh whipped cream and strawberries. And my other son doesn't really have a preference. He's kind of my non, my non foodie. He'll, he'll eat anything and eat it happily. All right. The great part is all this sugar that escapes, it's easy to just kind of press back in as you're working. All right, so. I kind of create a little rectangle here. I'm just going to put it in half. Half again, half again. And then in thirds. And then usually I'll find, because I'm going to kind of just ball them up a little bit. Usually I'll find that one is a little bit bigger, one's a little bit smaller, and I usually end up with 13 by the end as I'm kind of reshaping them. Like this one looks bigger than this one, so I'm going to pull some off. If there's any place where you like are feeling that there's a blank spot and not enough of the sugar, it's easy to just take some of that sugar that's fallen off and add it right in. Um, Paige, how many layers of plastic wrap to use in wrapping the dough? Um, I just have one of those big, huge Costco plastic wrap things. And so I just kind of wrap and twist and wrap and twist probably three to four. Um, I don't count. I just kind of go by... 
uh, just go by look. I really am just trying to make sure that no place only has two layers. I want every place to have at least three layers. So the other thing that I'll do is as I start to cook these, like the first batch, I'll just cook two and then I'll notice if they're a little bit too big or too small. And then from there, I'll go size the other ones up or down a little bit. So I've just found that for me, 13 seems to be about the right number for, um, for my waffle maker. So let's talk cooking these waffles now. Sorry, I'm realizing that a couple of these are bigger than I thought. Um, all right, so for cooking, so sugar burns at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you cook your waffles anywhere higher than 375, you're going to, instead of getting that nice, gorgeous sugar, melted sugar crust on the outside of these waffles, you're going to get burned sugar crust on the outside of your waffles. And nobody wants that. So, Sorry, resizing and trying to think and talk at the same time. Um, uh, so you want to get a waffle iron that has temperature controls so that you can have it lower. Now, a normal stove cooks, the range for a normal stove is usually um, 200 to 500, right? 200 being the low, 500 being the hot. So in the middle is about 350, right? So I have gotten myself a... Uh, stove top waffle iron opens up like this right so it's easy to soak off and clean the sugar makes a mess when it's cooked but if you just once these are cooled soak them in warm water they clean right up um, and so uh i like having i like having these that i can just soak in water and clean the sugar really, really easily. If you are using a traditional waffle iron, make sure that it's one that has temperature controls and just play with it a little bit until, cause you want it to cook the waffles, get them golden, cook all the way through, and you want it to be warm enough to melt the sugar. You don't want these left, right? You want it to be warm enough that it melts the sugar, um, but not so hot that it burns the sugar. So I think I'm right on. I think I'm gonna get that 13 waffles just like I talked about. see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen ha! i did it i guess i shouldn't be proud of myself since i've made these so many times i should know what size to make <laughs> um all right uh so if you uh if you do not have these options right if you don't have a waffle iron with a temperature control and you don't want to buy a stovetop waffle iron Never fear, I have a solution for you. A normal waffle iron, like the ones that don't have temperature control, so you just plug in and it turns on. Like that's the basic one that I have for normal waffles. Uh, they usually cook at, I'm trying to remember if I wrote that down in my notes. Uh, they tend to be more like 425 degrees at home, like just plug in and go waffle irons. Cause that's the normal temperature for traditional waffles. Anyway, so what I do with the stove top one is this, hold on, I'm just gonna bring this over. Don't spill, don't spill, don't spill. Plug this back in. Okay, so uh, you so if you'll notice, there is when I open this up, this one on the bottom is obviously going to be warmer than the one on the top because on the bottom is touching the heating element, right? So what I do is when I first put them in, um, I will cook it for about a minute and a half on this side, and then I will flip it over and then cook it for another two and a half minutes, or I will, let's see, I'm trying to keep track of which side's the hot side right now. I will put the dough in, this is what we're gonna do now. I'm going to put the dough in, close it, 
and I'm going to flip it right away. Alexa, set timer for two minutes. And then I'm going to do two minutes on this two side. Minutes, starting now. And then two minutes on the other side. Now, if you're using a normal waffle iron that does not have a temperature control, when you put the, try just one ball at a time until you get this right, right? You don't want to ruin these balls. So put one ball in, let it cook for a minute, and then unplug your waffle iron and let it continue to sit there for about three more minutes and the waffle iron will slowly cool down. It will give it that immediate hot, help it get crusty, help that sugar melt, but then it won't keep cooking it at that super hot temperature. Uh, the negative is obviously that then you're going to want to plug it back in, bring it back up to heat before you do the next batch. But once you have it down, right, once you know what it's gonna take, um, it goes faster than you think. Um, anyway, so. To answer all of those questions. Uh oh, hold on, my laptop that I'm reading comments on is, says it's dying. Oh, you gotta love it when something gets unplugged on accident. Okay, uh, lemon curd is the best on these. Amen, Megan, my favorite. Rachel, Facebook Live. Thank you for your first Facebook Live shout out. Oh, you're so welcome, Rachel. Hopefully, I got it right. Um, Paige, you're making me feel better. You're so glad. Uh, you're glad that you're watching a video. You had a terrible day today, Paige. I'm so sorry. I, I've had a couple of rough days in the last month. So right now I'm just trying to stay positive because my kids get to spend Christmas with their dad this year, which is fine. Like it's an every other year thing, not a big deal. But, um, because of how like the holiday is falling, they're actually going to be with him for 10 days and only with me for eight just fine next year it'll be the opposite but um makes me sad that i'm not there as tonight's tonight and tomorrow night are my last nights with my kids for 10 days so i feel you try not to dwell on that uh day you cool thank you mabel so much okay um have you ever alexa stop all right so i'm going to flip these alexa set timer for two minutes uh, start from questions. Starting now. To knead them in the machine. Oh, great question. Uh, Kathleen wants to know if I've ever tried to knead the sugar crystals while it's still in the machine. Uh, so because I take the dough out of the machine for the first tries, and then actually I, sometimes I'll leave the dough in the machine for the first tries, and then I'll just run my Bosch mixer and that will do the knead. But because I do the refrigerating, if you put the sugar crystals in, and then refrigerate it, the sugar crystals will actually kind of melt in the dough. So you don't want to mix in the sugar crystals until right before you're going to cook them. Uh, so no, I don't ever meet them with a machine because uh, I don't want to put, because the machine is really, really strong and putting that dough back into the machine will actually negate some of the rise. So a little hand kneading is fine. Machine kneading is going to be a little bit too powerful. So that's why I don't need the sugar in early. The sugar will actually get wet and melt and be made a mess. Okay, let's talk about freezing the dough. You can have a couple of options for when you can freeze the dough if you want to make this ahead of time. Uh, obviously, after the first dries, great time to freeze it. Wrap it in plastic instead of putting it in the fridge, put it in the freezer. Then when you're ready to make it, put it in the fridge and leave it there for the second rise. Leave it in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours and then go on with the rest of the recipe from, from then. Uh, the other option is to, at the end of the second rise, so after it's at eight to 24 hours in the fridge. You can move it over the freezer. This is one of my, I don't like this way as much because then you have to bring it back to room temperature uh, before kneading in the sugar. I feel like that's a little bit counterproductive. Plus it'll be bigger in the freezer. And so it's not the one I recommend, but it can be done. My favorite way is actually to freeze it at this point. Let's say I'm by myself tonight because it's a Tuesday and there are all the kids with their dad and I don't want to cook 13 waffles because they're best fresh. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep aside the ones that I do want to cook and I'm going to wrap all these extra balls in uh, plastic wrap. Alexa, stop. Uh, and then I'm going to put all my plastic wrap dough balls. Let's see if this is done. Oh, look how shiny and glossy that's looking. It looks like we need a little bit more time. Let's check out the other side. Okay, so I think I have... Again, this I always do. Just start with two. I, I had my, uh, I had my cooktop at just under medium because I haven't used. I usually use my normal stove. I haven't used this in a while, and this tends to be a hot. So Alexa, two minute timer. 
So I'm going to turn the temperature up. It seemed like it was getting really hot. So, uh, and we're going to leave it in there a couple more minutes. So kind of like pancakes, the first couple take a little bit of tweaking and playing. Anyway, so then I'll take my uh, plastic wrap dough balls and I will put them in two layers of Ziploc um, freezer bags. I'll do the same thing with the dough. I'll take that plastic wrap dough and put it into two layers of freezer bags. Um, and then I can just pull out one or two at a time, depending on how many I want to cook. So then you'll pull those dough balls out, let them sit on the counter till they're close to room temperature, still easily pliable, and then go ahead and cook them like normal. Um, that's my favorite way of doing it. Is there another way? Oh, you can also freeze them after you cook them, least favorite way of all, because then in order to reheat them and enjoy them while the sugar is nice and warm and the dough is crusty, and um, then you have to like reheat them in the oven and it's a little bit trickier. So that would be my least favorite way, but it's still possible. Um, so if you're going to cook all 13 of these at once and you want them all warm and finished at the same time, you can put your oven on at like 175, 200 degrees, and you can put the cooked versions of these on a cookie sheet and every time one's out, just put add it to the cookie sheet and just keep them warm in the oven that way. Um, and then you can serve it like a bar. You could have a bunch of toppings out and about and around and uh, ready for people to try. Okay, I'm going to get a cooling rack. about everything that I just said. Actually, you went after you move them from the fridge and the room temperature, oh, then back in the fridge. Yes, Kathleen. Um, I think I answered that already. Alexa, stop. Alexa, two minute timer. Alexa, start two minute timer. Three minutes, starting now. Or three minutes. <laughs> um, Grace wants to know, you've never had these before. What's the difference between these and a regular batter waffle? Um, so, the obvious difference, of course, is uh, one is pourable batter and one is dough-based batter, right? So thicker, runnier. Uh, the next difference is these are yeast-based. Normal waffles typically are not yeast-based, although I have had yeast-based pourable waffles as well. Um, to develop the flavor, you want to give these a couple rises, time in the fridge. They're going to have a stronger, yeastier flavor. Uh, I'll rip these apart when they're done cooking, and you can see the interior as well, that the texture there is different. And then, of course, the final difference is these big chunks of sugar. What they should be doing is melting in uh, and creating this shiny crust, sugary crust, along the outside of the waffles. So they are very sweet. They're incredibly delicious and they are totally worth it. Uh, I can't see all your comments. Oh, I'm so sorry, Terry. I'm not writing any comments. I'm just answering here. I will write in the comments later links to things like the sugar and other questions that people had. Um, hold on, I'm gonna see if I missed any. Oh, oh, I'm smelling something burn. Great, great. Oh, see, so this is what you don't want to do. I turned the temperature up too high, and look what happened. So this one's a throwaway, but look, this one looks great. You can see it's all glossy where the sugar has melted all over the top. Let's look over and look at the other side. Aha, so this side. Okay, the other thing you want to be aware of, the sugar is incredibly hot and because it's sticky if you touch it it's going to stick to your finger and continue to burn until you get it off do not touch these with your hand right just don't do it get a tongue get a fork get anything do not touch these with your hand i am notorious I'm notorious for touching hot things with my hands. My hands are so used to hot things that it's pretty, that, I don't know, I get a lot of blisters, but I also have a lot of calluses. Um, do not touch these. I don't care how well you think your fingers can handle hot things. Just don't do it. Just don't, just don't. It's really bad. 
Elena, what if you leave out the pearls? YouTube is having issues the last few days and you're not seeing most comments either. Um, uh, you, I would never leave out the pearls. Like that's a huge component of these waffles. Alexa, stop. Okay. All right, so our other side is cooked now. Look how perfect that is. Too bad the back side is burnt. Now you'll notice these cook really good right here in the center. If you don't want to cook four at a time, you can um, just cook one blob in the center. One of the ways, one of the ways around having this kind of cooler side over here is part way through. You could always pull these out and flip them right like that but I don't usually bother, right? But um, you can do that if you wanna make sure that they're more evenly cooked. Obviously, the Bruges, waffle, the Bruges waffles and waffle of and places like that, they have special cooktops that are the perfect temperature all over the place. It's just more expensive. This is the cheapest but easiest at home way I have found to make these. All right, let's pull these out and let's do one more batch. See if I can do it without burning everything. Oh, this one makes me so sad. Oh, you can't see. Okay. All right. So. One. Four. I'm going to close these and squish it shut. Alexa, set timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Uh, Paige, you've been thinking about you because you're having Harry Potter Christmas cards. Oh, that's so fun. I love Harry Potter. Uh, Margaret, they look delicious. Thank you so much, Margaret. Uh, yes, Kathleen, I would not leave out the sugar crystals because, I mean, the waffles by themselves are fine, but that's not what makes them special. Like, it is that melted sugary crust that really makes these what they are, so I would not recommend that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, like I said, the dough doesn't have very much sugar in it, so I've... I mean, you could make it without them, but I'd probably add more sugar into the dough to balance that out. And I, I mean, I just wouldn't bother. I would just do a normal, a uh, normal, um, sorry, there is, aha, there was a little hair. Um, I just would make normal waffles if I just wanted normal waffles, right? My sister makes, uh, my daughter makes a sourdough waffle that she really likes. And my sister makes a yeast waffle that's pourable that she really likes, but I don't know. I'd rather just have my traditional spongy waffles or this dense sugary waffles. But personal preference. You, I mean, you totally, this dough, you could totally do that with. Um, are they sugar cubes? No, they're not. Although I, ha I have had people say that when they can't find these Belgian sugar pearls, that if you take some sugar cubes and chop them up, that it will work. I will say these are denser than sugar cubes. So while I've been told you can do that, um, I, I did not, I tried it just to see. I did not like the results as much as just buying the Belgian sugar pearls personally. Uh, but that's a great question, June. Um, delicious, thank you. All right, so, all right, first turn. These are still, you can see they're starting to get cooked on the back side. So we're going to turn this over. Alexa, stop. Alexa, set timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Okay. Any other questions? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull out some, I was going to... I was gonna pour lemon curd on these, which is my favorite. So, toppings. Um, cookie butter is a good one. Nutella is a classic. Um, 
cinnamon and sugar and caramel sauce is great. I also, my favorite, okay, please forgive me. I have some spray whipped cream. To be fair, it's the kind that's actually whipped cream, but, uh, and then strawberries and raspberries. My favorite is lemon curd with whipped cream and raspberries. Um, but I, um, my lemon curd had gone bad. I forgot with the storm. Um, back when we had the storm and I lost four fridge, four fridges worth of food, I forgot that I lost my lemon curd and I haven't made any more since then because I usually just always have it around, but I haven't needed it. So anyway, I don't have lemon curd today. Once we're done with the live stream, I'm going to make some lemon curd because, yes. I'm also not going to cook up all these waffles. I'm going to um, bag them up, put them in the freezer, and use them for Christmas morning. Especially considering that I have a batch of dough on the counter, a batch of dough in the fridge, and then a batch of dough right here as well. Strawberries. Let's get a plate. All right, so I checked this side. You can see it's not quite ready. Let's check this side. Ooh, and this side's really not ready. Alexa, repeat timer. Your two minute timer, restarting now. is the one that we made earlier. You can see how as the sugar melts, it gets all shiny and gets like a little crust all over this. You will still have some sugar chunks in there. Now this side where it got a little overcooked, but you can see where it really was melting beautifully. Anyway. But. All right, so whipped cream, strawberries. Let's see how, that's, oh, that's looking much better. I'm going to cut this. There we go. Man, it seems like my cooktop is cooking a little on the cool side over here. So I'm gonna flip this this way. Alexa, repeat timer. Your two minute timer. Restarting now. All right. Well, come on, focus. There we go. So, there should be a crunch as you bite into these. There should be, if you did the overnight version, there should be a great yeasty flavor. Don't go over medium. It's better to have to 
cook the waffles longer, like I'm clearly doing today. Again, I usually use my stove, which is a little more accurate um, than a cooktop. But don't go for medium. As long as it stays under 375, even if it takes longer than the four minutes to cook, you're going to be just fine because that sugar won't burn unless you heat it up to a higher temperature. So just keep it low. Just move around. Your Another reason that I like this is that I can move it around, right? Like I found that it was cooking a little cool on this side, so I just flipped it. Easy peasy. Um, sorry that it's not working out perfectly to four minutes for everybody. It's always fun when live videos don't go exactly according to plan. Um, but we are... Man, that is still just... So much fun. I'm going to move these around a little bit, trying to get that other side cooked more evenly. Alexa, stop. Keep the keep the warm ones, the finished ones, in your oven with your oven at like 175, so as low as the oven can go, just to keep um, all on a tray, keep them warm, so they're warm at the same time. Um, and I guess that's it. Uh, Peggy Lynn, you live in the Netherlands. Jealous. Uh, and they used to offer a chocolate-coated waffle. What kind of glaze would set up that you would recommend? Um, I have seen them stuff dark chocolate inside the waffles i haven't seen them coated in chocolate though um i would say i would say a dark compound chocolate is what i would use like a merkins or a peters um i would definitely have them have it uh warm right melted already so you can just dip the warm waffle in it um I've never seen them served cold, so I, the chocolate wouldn't set up unless you let it cool completely. So if you cook them and you let them cool completely and then dip them in chocolate and then let it cool and set, I mean, that would, it sounds delicious. Um, but if you want them fresh and warm, you're not going to want to let them cool, right? Um, Kim, what is pearl sugar? There's two different kinds. There's Swedish pearl sugar, which is really, really small and goes great on small pastries. And there's Belgian pearl sugar, and that's what this is. This is what it looks like. Sorry, flipping that over. It looks like this. Rough, big sugar crystals. Um, your first test. Oh, that's true, Kathleen. Oh, look how perfect these are looking now. So I moved the ones over here to here and these to here. So now they're cooking more evenly. So they should be done in just a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to eat some more because that's what I get to do. There we go. Um, something new you have to try. Yes, Kim, 100%. June, you're with me on the lemon curd, right? This is getting better. Um, okay, hold on. I'm just making sure I'm caught up on comments. We'll look at this last batch, and then I will let you guys go... Um, with a waffle maker like yours, can it be put in the oven to bake instead? Um, no, the handles of this are plastic, so the handles would melt in the oven. And uh, you'd want that direct heat, so I would not try to bake these. Delicious, thank you. Okay. Uh, can you see the inside of one before I put the goodies on top? Kathleen, that's a great question. 100%. Okay. So, 
Now we have, this is what you were looking for, color profile wise, all right? All right, that looks great. All right, so, going to move these over to the cooling rack. I'm just gonna open this up, pour it out, bring this back over here. Okay, actually, I can put this over here for now. Let that cool off. Okay, so here's from the batch that we just made. And we've got some great glossiness on the outside where that sugar has melted. And you wanna let it cool just enough that the sugar gets hard and you can, you know, touch it without burning yourself because without that sugary liquid on it. All right, and still a little bit warm. All right, so when you rip it apart, you're gonna get chunks where that, oh, hot, 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 sorry, I touched some hot sugar. <laughs> you're gonna get parts like right here, that's melted sugar, that's why that looks all glossy and glazy, right? Same thing right here, those little sugar chunks that are melted inside the dough. You can see the dough has that great uh, thick texture to it. If we cut it instead of rip it, You'll see pockets, see like that little pocket right there, that's a sugar pocket where that is opening up. So, ooh, look at that beautiful sugar pocket right there. All right, so they have a nice crunchy outside and a soft inside. Just delicious, seriously, so good. All right, so, uh, Grace, do you learn new things today? Thanks, safe and happy holidays, thank you so much. Kathleen, you need sugar pearls, 100%. Okay, I think I've caught up and answered all the questions. Uh, next Tuesday is the week of Christmas. It's the 22nd, so it's a couple days before Christmas still. Do you want to have a live or not? <laughs> I'm open either way. I can do something short and quick. We can do something like um, eggnog French toast. We can do uh, a cheesecake. We could do uh, cheese balls. I have a classic cheese ball that I make constantly throughout this time of year. And then I have a s'mores cheese ball. That's a fun like dessert cheese ball. Um, we could do, I don't know. Any recommendations if you want? Uh, we could do uh, Christmas cake pops. Um, I'm trying to think of something that's, it's such a crazy week. I'm fine not going live, but my kids are gone, and so I will be around. If people want me to go live, I will. Um, the next Tuesday, I will take off because that will be my Christmas break with my kids. So let me know. Um, let me know if you want to go live and what you want to see. Uh, cheesecake, cheesecake. Uh, uh, so if you want to see a cheesecake, do you want eggnog cheesecake, lemon meringue pie cheesecake, butterbeer cheesecake, or any other recommendations of flavors? Uh, I bet lots of Belgian sugar, per girl, <laughs> Belgian sugar pearl orders are going to be made tonight. Yes. I mean, it's, they're so worth it. I keep them around all the time. They don't go bad. Seriously, uh, seldom. Make a head breakfast to throw in the oven Christmas morning. Um, this is, this is what I usually do at Christmas morning. <laughs> Uh, if I don't do this, then I do my eggnog French toast. I have also done my caramel pecan cinnamon rolls, but I already did a live stream with my caramel pecan cinnamon rolls. Um, um, I do have like a, my mom used to make a breakfast casserole with like sausage and bread and eggs that you let soak overnight the night before and then throw in the oven and cook. I'm not a mushy bread person. 
like I'm all about texture. So it's not my favorite. So I haven't made it in years, but I have the recipe and I can make it if that's something you want to see as well. So, um, you top yours with Nutella and whipped cream. That is my youngest son's absolute favorite, 100%. Um, lemon break pie cheesecake, butterbeer cheesecake. Um, your first live stream, Tigris. Welcome, welcome. Okay, uh, so you guys can continue to leave comments on what you want to see next week. I will catch up and look at that later. Eggnog French toast sounds delicious. Oh, it seriously is. Plus with eggnog syrup. That's really the winning point. Hey, buddy. Hello. Are you just waiting here for waffles? Yes. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you guys for joining me again. It's wonderful to spend my evening with you guys. So thank you for participating. And I will see you next week. And I will continue to see what people want to see uh, before I decide what to make next week. Um, so it'll be a surprise. <laughs> uh, so next Tuesday, 6.30 Eastern. 3.30 Pacific. Uh, thanks for joining me and I will see you then. All right. Have a great rest of your week. Week and a half before Christmas.